Well, this is so. So I had an idea, and again, it's it's just an idea because I have a nonprofit, and ultimately, what our nonprofit does is, you know, as as a lot of dog trainers do, it's we we I, I get a collective of dog trainers. You know, I I'm one of those people in LA, like I'm looking at LA dog trainers, and I'm like, oh, she's good. Oh, he's good. So I just hit him up, and I just say, how you guys doing? I'm a dog trainer. I host a dog training podcast. You want to be on that podcast? Uh, listen to the podcast. I'd love to meet with you and have coffee. And like, I'm a networker, right? And one of the big things was we were talking to Sarah Bruski, who's on Consider the Dog. She's she's dope. Um, and we were saying, you know, Shih Tzu and, and IP, you know, and, and protection sports have have clubs. Agility has clubs. Pet dog training don't have clubs. Doesn't have clubs. We don't have clubs, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, you have like ISCP, right? Like you have that, but where can we sharpen steel against steel? Like, how can we do this? How can we get dog trainers to come together, different skill levels? How can we get each other to work dogs with one another? How can we, you know, in a, in a very, it has to be a very open environment where, you know, and roll and, and, and roll. How can we, how can we practice? Right. And so in my nonprofit, obviously we teach, you know, we, we work with rescues, we work with shelters, we work with fosters, we work with volunteers, we teach them handling. Oh, you know, I'm not the person, I didn't invent this. A lot of people do this, but part of one of the programs that I want to work with is I want to see how we can get dog trainers to collaborate in a city, in any particular city, how can we get, especially we have a lot of listeners on this podcast. How can we all come together, meet at a shelter, give us 10 dogs that have been returned, just an idea. And how can we collaborate and how Mm -hmm. can we talk? How can we, um, you know, maybe if it's not 10 dogs with behavior problems, maybe it's just something simple. Like, you know, I don't know what it is, but yeah, like bring 10 dogs out. And how can we get dogs in the same room with a bunch of different trainers maybe and and work how can we how can we do that right any thoughts blake no but it's really something that i'm gonna like think about because it is it is really interesting it's Mm -hmm. it's hard though because you border on the line of experimenting at the expense of the dog Mm -hmm. and technically you're always doing that Mm -hmm. like no matter what but when you're and that's that's what it's always been from the beginning, even when it was more from a competitive standpoint of like, right. okay, well, you get this dog. Because well, you're practicing on your dog. And that's like, what. yeah. And like, you like you get this dog from a shelter and you do positive reinforcement only, then I'm going to do this. We're going to show you. But it's like, you, mm-hmm. you can't just have this dog as this test dummy, even though it, it is always going to be that. So of course, that's where it, things get a little bit murky. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, how, do we, how do we do that? I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, but there's something there. And there's some way, how can we benefit rescue animals? They're like, like, for example, like my, we will one, once a month, my company will take a rescue animal that's been returned and we train the shit out of that dog and we help find it a home for a rescue organization. Right. And so that's something that my company does and my staff volunteers their time. You know, I pay them for it, of course, but it, at the end of the day, it's, it's their volunteer work and their experience with rescue with how can we, or is that something we do at kennels, right? Like we might go to someone's kennel, like, I don't know, I don't know, uh, let's say I hosted, I had 10 dogs here that are training and we invite trainers to come. We all work together. Right? Maybe like, it's something logistically that would have to be done if it's 10 people with 10 different dogs. And it's not necessarily like, mm-hmm. like, like a group class type thing, like all at once. Maybe it's like, let me show you how I'm going to teach this dog. Mm-hmm this command and then mm-hmm. i'm going to bring the other dog out oh, okay well let me show you how i'm going to teach this dog this game and yeah everybody because i don't i never want it to be like oh i'm here and you're here i want it to no, be of like course. let's bring what we got to the table and let's oh but okay. see but but see but that's exactly the point of of rolling is you want to roll with guys that are better than you mm, true. And, and, and and it's not about ego it's not about any of that stuff it's not about winning or losing because there's no winning or losing in like who's training their dogs it's just it's just the thing about rolling with people who know more than you is again, you pick up the little bits of information that you're, that you're capable of picking up at the time. And because now you're that much better, now you can pick up a little more and a little more and you, you baby step it, you know? So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whoever's better, whoever's worse. That's and, dope. you know, and, and that's, I think the essence of it. And, and if, if even having hands-on dogs, like one person per dog makes, I think the most logistical sense, at least in my head right now, like mm-hmm. if people, if trainers could donate or volunteer, let's say, I don't know, like six days of their time, if they live in that city, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Um, everybody comes in 
for six days straight, you know, and we're going to put these dogs through like a very, very basic, you know, we're going to teach them this, 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 and this in that amount of time. Well, you know what I think it needs to be because you can't take the same dog and go, okay, you, let me see what you do with it. Let it's almost an assign, it's like assign no, people dogs. Maybe saying, that's what I'm saying is everybody has their own dog. You have yeah. your own dog, but right. what it really needs to be is, is perhaps not a city thing and mm -hmm. more of a bigger project from a, a, a film crew that yeah. can go around and say, ah. hey, I took this dog. Mm -hmm. And, and it, if you really want to make it work, it has to be the dog that is like, in order for like a rescue to just give up a dog, it has to be the dog that probably isn't really adoptable or it has to be right. the dog that has been returned that like, no one's really going to take this dog. So like, let me see what you would do with this dog. I can't be there for a month or a week. Right, right. We have a life. So right. the film crew films what you did with this dog. We see where you got. We see what was unique, what was different, what was the same. I mm -hmm. take a dog, I do this. We see this person take a dog and we go, holy shit, that's really different. Or mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't work here, but that's unique. So it's and showing the process. So that showing, way, so that right. way we, we don't have, we don't need the people to be in the same room. We need people to see the yeah. process. You need that, to that's, see yeah. The process, you, and then mm -hmm. you also need to, at some point, like how many things are going to be redundant or how many things are going to yeah, be the exact course. same that you go, okay, we don't need to show this, but what of are you course. doing that's slightly different or what are you doing yeah. that's slightly different? And, yeah. and how can we, take this and potentially pay these people who yeah. are doing this yes. so that the rest of the world can learn from it. Right. And, right. That, and that's the point because the thing about that's the conditioning, right? Right. Well, well, that's the conditioning, but some, the thing about redundancy is sometimes I'll see like a hip toss and they do one little thing different. And I'm like, Oh shit, I'm gonna try that. And it's better. It's better than I was doing, you know? And so, mm -hmm. so like, I, I agree with, I think, I think that makes the most logical sense. Like having a film crew follow people. Cause then you can do like a three week. Right. Right. And right. push yeah, the dog through like do, yeah, you can have somebody like, hey, we're gonna keep this dog. Everybody's right. gonna get the dog for two months. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and 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 it shows. It does show. Like I've noticed a lot of the different processes out there for getting a dog through something. Like Alvin, Ivan Balbalov was doing toy work to get a dog to stop being so reactive on lead. Like it's it's interesting that the different ideas that people have out there, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, no, I I think that that's definitely that's most a, likely amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. You just you just cleared everything up. Um, and that all the all the questions I had in my head. Thank you. And, and, that. and all the while, it gives people again, the opportunity to sharpen themselves and roll around a little bit, you know, you just you see what other people are up to. And you take what's like you said earlier, it's, it's kind of having that filter, you take what's valuable, you know, and don't worry about what's not. So and over time, slowly, it, it builds on itself. That, that's the Bruce Lee quote right there. Are you familiar with that quote? No, what is it? I don't know. Probably it is. Uh, it, it, extract what is useful. Discard, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Discard what is useless, create what is uniquely your own. Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Thanks Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> yeah. um, that's what it is. The only thing that gets challenging is that film crew has to decide what to the show edits. or what to film. Right. Edits. Yeah, the edits. That's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part right there. Well, I well, think, man. I think, yeah, no, I think it's, 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 uh, I think, yeah. And I think, and I definitely think, and I definitely think, you know, the trainer has to have a, uh, a say uh, on that cut on the cut for sure you know right yeah i mean i think that that shit right there is a brainchild worth worth nurturing it, it's well, it, that you want to be on this brainchild blake i'm down yeah i'm hell I'm, yeah I'm down. yeah I, I i like it i i think it's it's something that is needed uh and it's with the people that want to actually help there's some people who are doing really unique things but they're not no, genuinely no clue. in the business of helping others they're in the mm -hmm. business of like profiting and, for it or trying to just get the, the sole credit for it right um, at right. the end of the day i i'm doing something unique and you can take it and be helping other people and then you're you're filming a video on it like for me personally mm -hmm. who gives a shit more power to you mm -hmm. right like like you know what i mean how many people are, are, are doing a baron bowl or how many people are doing this or how right. many people are working on that like like who knows who originally invented that thing that way who invented right? the wheel like, nobody like, knows it's not about that person getting the credit and like i think we need to get a little bit away from that with, with certain people in big names yeah, it's like that, yeah. Yeah. messiah you're complex yeah. well you're it's about moving forward that's what i loved about um that's what i love about 10th planet you know is is they don't really care about like they, they created all kinds of different when the first time i saw the electric chair i was like oh shit but it's just yeah. but they don't you know but they, they don't really care it's just like look man we're just trying to Evolved jujitsu. Yep. That's all. I, I think it would be something that would be nice to just 
a rising tide rises all ships type thing. So if somebody learns whatever the small thing is, then you're just that much better, even if it's a yeah. tiny amount. And mm -hmm. if you're that much better, then when you're putting out your content, it's that much better. And then, and so on and so on, you know, cause then there's that other quote. The one that I like is, uh, is the Tupac Shakur quote, you know, that's like, I may not change the world, but I guarantee you I'll spark the mind of the person that does type thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's incremental progress. Like, like you said, with yeah. the Baron Bolos and the Kimuras and all that. So I remember when triangle chokes were like amazing. <laughs> you know, like you'll see two. Now they're standard practice, you know. Yeah. yeah, they're basic. You know, it's like ground. I pay attention, like, motherfucker. See, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you though. It's like it's just it's a matter of progressing it forward, which is really just a matter of like show it, show what you do sure. because for, you show never know. It, but it. don't, yeah, don't, don't. Right, hide. right, right, right. The hard but, part, though, people don't want to do that. I, I know, which is why it's kind of falling on on like those of us who aren't afraid to do it to provide the opportunity to do it. And that's, and that's the big thing. The people that I've reached out to on Instagram has been because they show it. And I'm like, you're dope. And you have no idea how good you are. Like people who are just doing it out of passion, people who are just, you know, just, just, uh, there's this girl I follow on Instagram, Toki learns dogs, Toki dot learns. She's in Brooklyn. She's in, in, in New York and she's sick. Shout out to Toki. Um, young girl, 150 followers on Instagram. She has no clue how good she is at all. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Anyway, just shout out to her. Oh, you guys should check out too. Are uh, you guys familiar with Forrest Mickey? Oh, love Forrest Mickey. Yeah, Forrest I, we Mickey. don't know him personally. We know he's friends with Tommy. We know he's friends with Tyler. We know he's friends with Michael, all that stuff. You know, he's probably, the, we should hit him up. We, we can put him on yeah. the podcast. Cause he's, uh, he's, I love watching his healing work. Like he's, he is He's a specialist. <laughs> like that boy is a specialist for sure. I love that. I love it. Well, I wanted to ask you a couple questions because we were taking a lot of your time, my friend. It's we're about two, two and some change in right now. Um, I want to ask you this question that we ask a lot of our special guests. We talk about dog training as art, and this is uh, a common theme that we've seen across the board from Tyler to Michael to Tommy to everybody that we have on. And if you were an artist and you had a toolbox, you know, your brushes, your colors, your paints, your pencils, your inks, whatever it was, what is the tool in your artist toolbox that you feel allows you to be the most effective dog trainer you can be? Oof. There's so many different directions that you can go with that. Yeah, I'll give I'll give you some uh, some of the common answers, right? Or like what we've heard from before is I, I don't even I don't I don't even want to hear it because okay, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, yeah. So are we, are we talking an actual tool like a? Like oh a no no no! An no. actual uh, it could be a skill, could be a mindset, could be a thought. What is it about? Like if you looked at yourself as an artist in dog training. What is it? What is an invaluable tool that in your mind, you're like, if I, this is the most important or one of the most important, so there could be multiples. I don't care. Okay. Uh, for me personally, and what I am in the business of, of is getting things to make sense for other people. So mm. um, my ability to articulate and break things down in a way that people can resonate with, I always want to look to continue to improve that because that's more important than anything else. In my opinion, people have to understand it. They have to get it, it has to be clear and it has to kind of excite them. And that, right. that might mean for the person that is also not the dog enthusiast, for the person that is not the dog nerd, that is not, you know, they just, they just want help with their dog. We, we have to be able to break things down for them. Mm -hmm. So um, the ability to articulate things for people is, that's that's it right there you see how i noticed that and i put that in our instagram post this guy knows how to make shit make sense and that's an art in and of itself right and i try to get better with that and make it entertaining yes. and, dumb. Yep. And, and and almost even when i'm breaking things down tell a little bit of a story mm -hmm. uh, I, I did actually have an instagram post on this uh a, a while back where i started looking at some of the very best comedians mm-hmm and and how they separate themselves from other comedians who tell really funny jokes mm -hmm. but they don't tell it in, in in the form of a story where what they said mm -hmm. in the beginning comes back full circle in the right. end and i want to be able to like link everything that mm -hmm. we're doing and have it come back so that's what i always mm -hmm. try to do and um when i tell a story or i explain um, or I, I break things down, even if I am telling the same story over and over again, because you had mentioned, Brent, how, how you, you sometimes want to change it up and you want to do it 
my goal is to do what some of the greats have done, like um, Dave Chappelle or like mm. Kevin Hart or whatever. Like it's particularly Chappelle. He'll yeah. go into a hole of a wall uh, yeah. a yeah. of a and just tell these jokes, tell these jokes, yeah. get a response. No, tell these jokes, say it. And what he's doing, it's the same material, but it's presented slightly different. It's mm-hmm. t- And then it gets a different response and mm-hmm. it gets different feedback and it gets lasting results. So my he's goal testing. is he's to testing. Yeah. and tell the story and learn and, and, and just switch it up through that because the material mm-hmm. is the same for what we're covering the majority of the time. Obviously, right. things are going to change. We're going to improve. It's going to get better. But how can I tell it better? And how can I change how I tell it for this particular individual? Right. Mm-hmm. And how they receive things and how they, yeah. How yeah. Their, their lens on the whole situation. Yeah, exactly. That, the, right. the paradigm that they see through, how can right. I get to see through the paradigm of the dog? And then mm-hmm. my visual and, and how can I take what they do and what they do for a living and, and sort of potentially use that mm-hmm. and a hundred percent. From my perspective, I've always told people that what, in my opinion, what, what separates like the really great dog trainers from like everybody else is their ability to understand that mm-hmm. they know the audience, they can cater to their audience. It's not just information that's spewed over and over and over. They, they can, they play with it and have fun with it. Like Dave Chappelle. I know, I know what you mean when you say that, you know, Dave Chappelle's a black belt. Let's just say he's a black belt. I was trying to avoid it to be nice to you. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. It, it, it was on the tip of my he's tongue. A- Two degrees, two degree, third, third degree. What, how many like stripes? Five, like fifth. Five, five stripes, but six, right? I, I, I swear, Brent, I was going to say it and I didn't to be polite to you, but if you're going to bring it up, then <laughs> yeah, then. <laughs> it's all good. No, I, that is such a beautiful answer. And, you know, I, I say this some, you know, game respects game, right? Like to see someone who is passionate about making things make sense to see someone. I mean, these are the qualities we see in a Tyler Mudo in a Michael Ellis. And these are why people love them, right? Like love these people because you're able to not only make it make sense here, you're able to make it make sense here. And I think that's when you're talking about the storytelling. This is something I strive to do every single day is how do I make it make sense here, here, you know, and, and, and here in your hands, like practically, how do you make it make sense? And I think that is, it's that Trinity right here, here, and here, right. Your, your mind, how do you make it make sense? How do you make it feel right? And how do you teach the person to actually apply it in real life? That is that, that Holy Trinity of like, of dog training. And, you know, every time that you master maybe just the dog training process well the next thing is the human training process right and shout out to russ at com canine he made this point he goes dog training is the only industry where we refer to other people as humans humans (laughs) (laughs) he goes no other profession refers to people as humans um (laughs) so but like how do you make it make sense to the people and then how do we how do we put this universe together? You know, so it's it's really dope. That was a dope answer, Blake. I really appreciate, I appreciate that. that. Yeah, and you you summed it up even better. Like the, the ability to storytell is actually more valuable than people realize um, mm-hmm. for what it is that we do. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Well, I think we are coming to the end of our podcast episode. I really appreciate you coming onto this podcast, Blake, um, you are welcome back anytime. We definitely want to have you. We, ha- we do have an idea of having a round table, uh, you know, like Hollywood Reporter does this round table of things. We would love to have a round table of some of our special guests in the future. So, uh, you know, I would love to invite you if you're, if you're willing. Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I love what you guys are doing and the direction that this is heading in. And uh, for the record, I mentioned it before we started this I decided to do my hair today because of that incident. Right. <laughs> that was this this now boy. We're coming to an end. Yes. I'm, I'm back to the hat. We're, we're good. <laughs> He's like, my head is freezing in this. <laughs> hey, this listen, I'm in Florida handsome. right now. I'm, I'm, I'm in sunny Florida. The weather is nice here, man. Oh, man. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, I've never, you know, that's, I've never been to Florida. I've been to Georgia. Never been to Florida. I got to yeah, go. We're doing I some good go. stuff here and, uh, are back. you doing a facility out there or no? No just facility. Your home right facility. Now. Just, just, yeah, the, the, the home mm. thing, the unique thing. And um, it allows me to just spend more time with my family mm. and, um, and also do something a little bit different with the dogs and, and kind of build that. a relationship in a different way and kind of bond with them in a way that yeah. the majority, majority of the dogs that are coming here, all dogs need it, but there, a lot of the dogs need something that is slightly different. And um, yes. mm-hmm. this is, 
it's a nice way for me to get back to what I enjoy doing is I enjoy working with the dog. Um, Where I've gotten to with the facility, I love what I'm doing in New York City. We're doing a fantastic Mm -hmm. job. I've I've spent so much time trying to develop a team and get them better and build a facility. That's up. ooh, ooh sorry. Do you have what yeah. what kind of time do you have right now? I want to be respectful. I, I I got some time, but my family's already asleep. 